Calisthenics is a form of resistance training using only your body weight. Other than looking cool and aesthetic, it also helps you build insane strength and tons of lean muscle mass. My name is Damon Caliversity. Welcome back to another video. Without further ado, here is how you can start regardless of your level. Let's start with bent arm exercises. Bent arm exercises require you to bend your arms when you wrap out a set. To target your push muscles like your triceps, chest and shoulders, you can do exercises like regular push-ups or regular dips. If regular push-ups or dips are too difficult for you, you can start with easier progressions like wall push-ups where you angle yourself against the wall. Your objective is to slowly shift your body into a horizontal position when you do the push-ups. Your final objective is to be able to wrap out dips for reps and sets. However, if you do not have an accessible dips bar, push-ups are fine as well. If you think push-ups are too easy for you, you can switch to doing bench dips. You just need a chair for it. To isolate your triceps, do push-ups with a closer grip. To isolate your chest, do push-ups with a wider grip. To target your pull muscles like your biceps, lats and rear delts, you can do exercises like pull-ups, chin-ups, or neutral grip pull-ups. To isolate your biceps, you can do close grip pull-ups or chin-ups. To isolate your lats, you can do wide grip pull-ups or high pull-ups. To isolate your forearms, you can do thumbless grip pull-ups or just pull-ups on a bar with a thicker girth in general. If any of these pulling movements are too difficult for you, focus on doing inverted rows. These are lighter variations of pulling motions and will eventually build you strength to do one normal pull-up. The same grip logic applies here. A closer grip to target the biceps and a wider grip to target the lats. A common mistake most athletes make when doing pull-ups is that they don't commit to a full range of motion. The first mistake is that they don't pull all the way until the chin is above the bar. The second mistake is not extending your arms fully when you complete one pull-up. These are minor mistakes but can greatly change the gains that you'll get from pulling. If you struggle doing regular pull-ups but do not have a low bar for inverted rows, you can check out my latest ebook which will feature exercises on how to target the lats, biceps and upper chest with calisthenics exercises with absolutely no equipment. You will also be entitled to a 50% discount when you purchase the ebook together with my first ever ebook on how to train for muscle mass. The links will be provided in the description below. For whichever progression you are at, you should aim to comfortably complete 5 sets of 20 reps with a 5 minute rest at maximum. Once you can do pull-ups, dips and push-ups for 5 sets of 20 reps with a 5 minute rest max, you are ready for some much harder exercises that target different types of muscles. The pike push-ups target the shoulders and lats. Make sure you lean in with bent arms and feel the tension on your shoulders. If you do not lean enough, you will not target your shoulders and lats adequately. If you're comfortable with doing high pulls, you can start training for the muscle up which is a combined vertical movement of pulling and pushing all together and it usually is the first milestone of strength achievements for most calisthenics athletes. If you need a tutorial for the muscle up, I posted a video on it, you can check it out. The link to the video will be in the description below. Once you become good at reps, it's time to train for static holds. Static holds are the next step to becoming stronger in calisthenics. The most common and important static hold to train for is the handstand. Unlocking the handstand will grant you pathways to unlocking other difficult moves like the planche press into handstand or the 90 degree push up. In a handstand position, your body weight has to be stacked one on top of the other in order to maintain balance. The handstand is more of a mobility and flexibility based static hold than one that is based off of strength. So here are a few stretching exercises that will help you to better unlock shoulder and lat mobility for your handstand. The first is known as the chicken wing stretch. Squat down and place the back of your hands against your waist. Bring your elbows in and lock them by your knees. Slowly bring your knees in closer to each other and relax your shoulders. This stretch will target all three of your shoulders delts, especially your rear delts which is important in unlocking the flexibility for the handstand. The second is known as the lat opener. Find a bar to put your hands on, grab onto the bar and extend your lats out. Press your body downwards and feel the stretch in your lats. This stretching movement opens up your lats, especially once it gets tighter from doing a lot of pulling. If you have a wall or vertical pole, you can use that for lat openers too. Just put your hand against the pole and stretch out the lats. 
The handstand places a lot of tension on the wrists as well, so here is how I warm up my wrists before attempting the handstand. Palms on the floor, fingers facing forwards, lean forward to stretch your wrists. Afterwards, palms facing up, fingers facing back, lean back to stretch your wrists. Finally, palms on the floor, fingers facing back, lean back to stretch the wrists. Spend at least 5 to 10 minutes stretching before training for the handstand and I guarantee your handstand progress will skyrocket. To warm up your shoulders for the handstand, grab a resistance band and bring it all the way to the back without bending your arms or arching your back to a great extent. Repeat this for about 2 to 3 times. There are two main ways to enter into the handstand using the kick up method. The first method is by using your core and is the most common method that is used by calisthenics and gymnastic athletes today. Bring your body into a pike, look between your thumbs and push away from the floor. Squeeze your core, mainly your abdominals and glutes before kicking up into the handstand. The second kick up method is what I call the shoulder lean method. This method puts more pressure on the shoulders and can tire your shoulders very quickly. Get into the piked position and lean slightly forward. Look just slightly beyond your hands and form a triangle between your hands and where you're staring. Kick up into the handstand before adjusting into a clean stacked handstand hold. In the handstand position, you need to constantly push away from the floor, keep your eyes between your thumbs and squeeze both your abdominals and your quads. The handstand is a game of pressure. Practice. practice both under kicking and over kicking until your body is eventually able to process the muscle memory for how much to kick to get into a proper balance. Once you've unlocked the handstand, you can now progress on to more difficult moves like the front lever and the planche. Static holds like the front lever and planche require very strong shoulder scapulars. The shoulder scapulars are in charge of four main movements to shrug, to depress, to protract, and to retract. The planche requires you to protract and depress your scapulars whereas the front lever requires you to retract and depress your scapulars. Before you start training for the planche or front lever, it is essential that you strengthen your shoulder blades first. Once your shoulder blades are strong enough to hold the protracted advanced tuck planche hold and the retracted advanced tuck front lever hold for a minimum of at least 3 seconds, you'll be ready to train for the full planche and front lever. Meanwhile, if you struggle with holding these two moves, here are some exercises you can do to strengthen your shoulder scapulars at home. The first is the scapular shrugs. Get down into the push-up position and extend yourself from the floor without having to bend your arms. This conditions your shoulder's ability to protract. The second is the pseudo leans for reps. In the push-up position, lean forward. Make sure your core is sucked in and your butt is squeezed down. Lean as far as you can and come back. This conditions your scapular's ability to depress and protract. The final is the pseudo lean hold. Lean forward with your core engaged. This time, your objective is to hold this position. Your final goal should be to hold the lean position for as long as your body allows you to. If you're able to hold the advanced tuck front lever for at least 3 seconds and you want to be able to unlock the full front lever, I have made an ebook on how to unlock it. You can get access to the ebook in the description below.